So Daniel, let's talk about Jordan Peele's movie, Get Out. I believe that this time when you watched it in Movie Club, you were watching it for at least the second time. Is that right? Yeah, I rewatched it twice so okay. that I can get the most of it in mm. terms of uh, improving my English and noticing all the, the little bits and, and, and English chunks, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's very rich, like both in terms of visual elements, imagery, metaphors, symbols, and also, yeah, like you say, just it's, like the dialogue is very rich and the way that different people speak is also an important element of Get Out. You hear a lot of different registers of English from more formal to less formal and it's just really interesting to observe that, the different types of Englishes that exist. Yeah, for example, when Rod speaks, he speaks in a very colloquial way mm -hmm. or uh, maybe from from where he grew up it's a uh, it's a dialect that i am not used to to be honest so. <laughs> i ain't never seen you like this before bro meeting family taking road trips don't come back all bougie man come back get your damn pants up to your damn stomach <laughs> <laughs> i had to to really be careful so that I could understand him. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is hard to understand. Should we like maybe recap what the movie is about for people who don't know it? Yeah, yeah, that is a good idea. Do you want to go ahead? Well, I am really bad in this to, to wrap up, so I, I will give you <laughs> I will give you the opportunity if it's okay. Oh, okay, you prefer Oh, no, you're putting the pressure on me. Well, we can't say too much because it is, well, so people should know that Get Out is a movie from 2017, directed by Jordan Peele. So up to 2017, I guess um, nobody knew that Jordan Peele was actually a cinematic genius. So before Get Out came out, he was best known for being one half of the comedy duo Key and Peele. And so I just knew lie. him as like a comic. And then he made this film and it really blew everybody away because they were like, okay, Jordan Peele is actually a cinematic genius in addition to being a funny guy. And um, he chose to make a horror movie that's about racism that's also funny, which is quite a, a challenge. But as he's a funny guy, I think it, it makes sense. And the character you mentioned, Rod, he's a very important part of why the movie is funny, even though it's also very serious and a little scary. So basically the movie is about a young black guy called Chris, who's a photographer, who is dating a white girl called Rose, and he goes to her parents' house for the weekend. So there's a bit of a running joke about how, you know, do her parents know he's black? Like they might be surprised to see a black guy showing up at the house and everything. And she reassures them that it's fine and, you know, they're cool and liberal and open and everything. And so there's nothing to worry about. And then, of course, he gets to the house and it's weird. It's very, very yes. weird. Very, very awkward. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what on earth is going on? Like already he shows up and then he discovers there's these two black people working for his parents. And he's told that they used to help out with the grandparents so like sort of caring for the grandparents mm. and the parents say oh we decided to keep them on after they died to help out around the house and it's true that they live on this like massive it's not just a house it's like a massive like manor house estate you know so they're not just like white and rich they seem to be like mega rich so it's yeah so that's weird and then there's all sorts of other weird things that start happening yeah, I think the movie really struck a chord with the audience mm. because even though it was the director's debut, mm. right? It had a, a massive success. Mm. And I think I, I listened the other day to a podcast in which they said that the movie was like like a week on like the best movie with a 100% positive reviews wow. on the Rotten Tomato page. And apparently this means a lot. So I, I am not so <laughs> so aware of this side, but the guys who talked about it are really the, the geeks mm -hmm. and, and the movie freaks. And, and they were 
blown away by this result. Did you guys see how long this was like pegged at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes? I mean, that's... Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Was a, it was this, quite a while. This was the highest rated movie in the history of Rotten Tomatoes for about a week because it had a 100% with over a 100 reviews. And so like that, that's a rarity. And of course, um, at this point that we're recording, it has 148 fresh reviews and one rotten review by Armand White. Of course. <laughs> what, what a surprise. And I don't know. Do you know Rotten Tomatoes? I I think it's it's well known. Yeah, it's like a site that mm. kind of they aggregate different movie reviews and then they give the movie like a sort of rating based on all the reviews. I think that's the concept. Um, mm-hmm. So I was looking at it yesterday because I was looking at some Christmas movies, and yeah, they're like ranked by percentage, and I think the percentage is to do with. Yeah, reviews on the site and then reviews from other sites. I think it's something like that. So it's basically a bit like the Internet Movie Database. So you can like find out information about a movie and see the reviews and everything. Um, so it's quite useful. But yeah, I doubt that many movies reach 100%. So yeah, that really says something about the quality of Get Out. Yeah, and there was all the hype around the movie and the bus. Mm. And that was maybe the reason why when I watched it for the very first time, I was was not blown away. On the contrary, I found it was a little bit boring. But but now, <laughs> after a couple of years when I rewatched it, now I was blown away. It is quite mm-hmm. a funny, I, I think. And it might be the, the one reason might have been that I didn't understand everything. So I think I watched it in English, and I may not understood everything. And also when something gets so hyped mm. and because I usually, I really like horror movies mm. and then I, I watched it and, and I, I went there with, with the, the thought in mind that it will be a, a 100% horror movie, but, but to me it was not. Mm-hmm. And so I was a little bit disappointed. But now it changed, it changed completely because I, I think I really like it and there's a lot to discuss, to be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Wow. That's it. That's interesting. Yeah. How um, hype can affect your perception of it. And yeah, in terms of the horror, it actually takes quite a long time for any of the horror to start. Um, it's a bit like I was listening to a podcast about Halloween by John Carpenter. So a very famous horror movie. And in that horror movie, like nobody gets killed until... Is it maybe like a good half hour into the film? So there's just like a lot of build up, a lot of tension. And I think Jordan Peele does the same kind of thing. Like he doesn't go straight into the horror. And to be honest, we discussed this. The horror is a bit silly in Get Out. But um, yeah, it takes a long time to actually get there. And that build up of tension, I think, is really, really clever. Yeah, yeah. I mean the horror the horror is always there because the topic in itself when we speak about racism mm. and stuff like that it's like that makes it also a great horror movie because because horror is in our lives all the time it exists and and even 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 though it is maybe a, a little bit subtle mm. in the movie with, with all of these little scenes and awkward scenes mm. but it's it's always there it's always there and and you you don't know what is going on and i think what makes it also so scary is that the protagonist he could have get out all the time but something pulled him back or, or pulled him to stay i have found yeah interesting and, yeah and he what could do you think mm, and that's a really good yeah that's a really good observation because you know at one point he is actually told to get out to leave and and that probably was one of his last chances to leave and then by the time he realizes he needs to leave it's too late but yeah there's like a build-up to that and there's opportunity yeah and he doesn't so yeah we could ask you know is he so in love with rose his girlfriend Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. trusting of her because it's interesting, we learn early on that they've been together for five months. 
So she's spent five months building up to this moment. And so there's a lot of love and trust there. And but maybe he's curious as well. Like as the viewer, you're super curious, like what is what is actually going on in this house with these people? Like there's something weird. So maybe there's that element of curiosity and inquiry. And that's also driving Rod, who who tries to to help Chris, his friend, who also gets some clues about what's going on and about the fact that it's really weird mm-hmm. and wants to solve mm-hmm. solve the mystery. Absolutely. And it was so it made so much fun to to watch Rod in this horror movie. And he gives a little bit of of the the, the funny element to the to the movie in general. Mm-hmm. Chris Chris This motherfucker hung up on me. It it makes it less dark, the movie. Without Rod, it would have been, yeah, really a a, a depressing movie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It would have been too depressing. But I, I really like the, the thing you say about the realities of everyday horror. And we really do feel like we're in Chris's shoes. Like we're really experiencing, um, mm-hmm. you know, what it's like. The, the sort of different levels of racism he experiences because at the beginning it's you know it's sort of there's a little bit of it but it's not too bad but it gradually gets worse and worse and worse so it was interesting to yeah how it puts you in these shoes even you know obviously we're talking as white people so I mean what do we know but this movie does help you to empathize and to understand and to see why yeah even just without the horror element even just you know going to your white girlfriend's parents house is scary you know, you don't know how people are going to react. And what do you think, Cara, or um, what do you like the most of this movie? Oh, I really like the performance by the main character. Um, I think his performance is really amazing. I don't know if he won any awards for it. Um, but I'm not sh- sure, but but it was his first movie, I think. Yeah, I even read that he was thinking of quitting acting before he got like maybe. Be- really? Yeah, I think before this he'd maybe been in an episode of Black Mirror, but um, yeah, I think this was like his first really big role, and yeah, I think his performance is really incredible. And he's not even American; he's British, and he does a re- he does a really good American accent. And for you, what's the like? What do you prefer about it? Well, I must say that, yes, also the performance of, of Daniel Kalugia, the main character, I, I really loved it. But what got me was, for example, the visuals. Mm. When we saw the, the sunken place. Yeah. When uh, when when Chris like, sort of sinked in <laughs> and fall through... The nothingness. Yeah. This was so well made, so artistically made. And I really liked it in general, the idea of being hypnotized in a way is so scary in itself. So this thought in a way that that somebody can manipulate you. Control you. Or make it. Yeah, it fascinates me and it scares me at the same time. That's why I really loved the movie. Mm -hmm. And also, I have to say that the music, the the movie score Mm -hmm. really got me because I find it really, really special. I have never listened to something similar to the the score. And so when I when I hear this music or when I listen to that, I can say in one second, "Ah, okay, it's get out. So this is an element which maybe is not discussed that often, but to me, music is really important mm-hmm. and it can make me feel in a specific way. But yeah, in general, the whole story behind hyp- hypnotized or hy- hypnotized or how do you uh, say hip- it? Hypnosis. Hy- hypnosis, yeah. It's a difficult word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That that got me, so I really liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a really powerful scene when he gets hypnotized ostensibly to cure him of like 
smoke of being a smoker to get him off cigarettes. Mm. But we learn actually that it it wasn't about that. And yeah, that scene is is scary. Like it's not bloody or gory or violent. But you know, when he's in the chair and he says, I can't move, and the mum says, you know, you can't move. It's like the day that your mother died. You sat there, you did nothing. I mean, that's, that's just, that is yeah. so manipulative. And just the idea of being paralyzed by someone else. That's really terrifying. Yeah. So th those elements were really scary to me, I must say. And, and it got me. <laughs> yeah. And also a, a funny fact, maybe that the, the mother, so she was also an actress mm. in another movie called Being Malkovich, I think. Oh, yeah. And there, it's also about like getting in the head of someone else. Mm -hmm. A really strange movie. So it was maybe also intendedly made by the director to to use the same actress. So in, in like in a similar situation or... A character that that also can, yeah, can can uh, push people like like a, a marionette or a puppet. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, that's I had like didn't that. realize that connection. Yeah, I think she's called Catherine Keener, right? Very good actress. And uh, yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that movie. I think it's called Being John Malkovich. Um, I've never seen it, but yeah, I've heard it's rather weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or for instance, the other actress she played um no Georgina Georgina who is the waitress right in the house mm -hmm. she played or she acted very well too this was incredible mm. even though it was it was just a side act maybe uh, yeah she, yeah she's not and, a main character yeah yeah mm, but i really loved the way how she acted mm. It's not. It's not easy the playing that role. Um, I don't want to say too much because we we will spoil the film for people. But um, yeah, any any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean it's it's a must watch. Mm. Definitely, I would say you need to watch it. And yeah, it to me it's it's an absolutely must seen movie. It's a it's a masterpiece. Mm. Agreed. Even if you don't like horror, it's worth persevering if you can um, and you'll have a good laugh and you'll learn a lot. And yeah, yeah, I must see. I agree. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So how, how much time do we have? Like one minute or no. 30 seconds or something. Actually, it normally, it normally tells you, doesn't it? Um, when it's going to... It does. Yeah, that's weird. It's not telling... Because we... St hang on. We st oh, no, because we started at 12. Oh no, so we still have some time actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have. We have. I thought we only had half an hour, but no, we have four. <laughs> I thought it was gonna like I thought it was imminent that it was gonna like cut out. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. which was why I was like, oh, we better wrap up. But um well, I don't know. I guess we said everything, right? Yeah, maybe I can tell you something that for me it's really difficult to talk about a movie that I have watched in English, sometimes it's really difficult to imagine what scenes that came in the movie. Mm. And that's why I, I discovered this thing in Amazon Prime, uh -huh. which I can't remember the name right. now. But when you when you pause, when you pause, there you can see the like the details, the trivia of the movie. Oh. It it shows you like additional information maybe about the actor or maybe uh -huh. an easter egg and stuff like that and i think it's called x-ray maybe i think i've seen that i haven't watched a movie on amazon prime for a while but i think i've seen that that's really cool yeah it's it's really cool because it it helps you sometimes mm. and it helps me and what i did is also i wrote down the different scenes uh -huh. that were in the movie and also on on Amazon it shows you like every scene you can you can switch by scene to the next scene for example so i i i wrote down like 18 or 17 scenes 
And these are very short, you know, uh -huh. for example, Chris leaves to meet Rose's parents. Chris and Rose start their journey. Mm -hmm. So so each scene in six or seven words. Right. And then I I can place like my notes in there and then I can remember like where it came up and stuff like that. I just thought maybe it would be interesting for you too because it's a powerful tool in my view. Yeah. For people who <laughs> who can't remember stuff and maybe even if, if you do it in not in your mother tongue, it gets even mm -hmm. more difficult. And that's why I think it's really useful to, to make little notes to write down stuff. Oh, that's so cute. that when you are in a discussion, like in a movie club, mm. you can like refer back and read it. Like a cheat sheet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like having book bookmarks in a book or something. Um, yeah, I've definitely seen that function. They they have other interesting functions on Amazon Prime. Apparently, you can do a watch party. Um, like, so you would watch it like with friends, but I think everyone would have to have Amazon Prime. Yes, yes. I don't really know much more about how that works, but yeah. Um, Yeah, I might do it. Should, that would be worth doing a video about or a blog post about that x-ray funk. Yeah. yeah, I think you can watch together and then just writing comments or, or oh, chatting right. that's, with okay, each other, that's, I think. Yeah, we've done, we had, we did something like that before in the movie club where we just all watched the movie at the same time, but like pressing play on our devices and watching it on whatever platform. And then we discussed it on WhatsApp. So that's like the more low tech way of doing it. But I like the idea of it being built in and then it's just a bit easier to coordinate. Um, yeah, they have some cool features on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I haven't used it for a while because I often use Canal or sometimes Netflix. But yeah, I should have a look at that that feature. Thank you for reminding me about that. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I'll make, yeah, I will do a video about that. I'm not sure if I can share the screen of Amazon Prime while I'm in there, but I can probably like get some screenshots and... Um, show people yeah. how to use that. That's a, and, that's a good tip. And another thing I wanted to mention is that even in the trailer, they are using uh, a lot of difficult words mm -mm. Because, because of the special vernacular that they are using. For example, I think it was the mother who, who told that or said that this thing it, instead yeah. of thing thingy. yeah and there's a lot of this and, rod <laughs> speaks quite a lot in the trailer so if i remember well i've used it before for listening practice and uh yeah it's quite challenging at least that gives you an idea of what to expect um, yeah absolutely and for example there is a phrase don't come back al bougie man <laughs> <laughs> he says and bougie i mean i am sure that even people that their native uh, language is, is English, don't understand. No, it. I wasn't. But I'm not sure. I wasn't 100% <laughs> sure what it meant. I actually double checked before I taught anybody what it what it meant. But it comes from the word bourgeois, you know, the French word that we do yeah. use in English, but yeah. it's like a kind of slang version <laughs> of that word. Yeah, so yeah. it gets very <laughs> complicated. Um, bougie. And it looks a bit like boogie. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's super confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a lot of fun in terms of learning English too, because these days you can just yeah go online and look it up what it meant, mm. and and so it was a lot of fun to watch the movie and and also to watch it more carefully. Yeah, let's say and yeah. Oh, that's that's great. And, mm. and what about the other movies? Maybe. Maybe we could end it with this to to talk about the other movie or say if it's worth to to, to watch the other movies as well. Oh, the other ones by I don't know them. The other ones by George <laughs> and Peel. Yes. Yeah. So I've seen Us. Yeah. I think if you like Get Out, you would enjoy Us. It's almost even more subtle than Get Out. Like the message is a bit less clear. I actually watched like an explainer video on YouTube recently, which analyzed it really, really well. Because us is it's less about race, it's more about class and the idea of an underclass and the fact that in the US some people live well because others suffer. So, it's, you know, it's, his movies are incredibly political, but, you know, really well made, 
and funny and good story. So it's not like, oh, this guy is preaching to me about, you know, race and class and all this stuff. It's, it's, no, it's, you want to watch the movie anyway.